I have a client who told me that um, when she was really young child and uh, one day she came back home and the, the father uh, saw a brand new eraser in her pencil case and without a word he gave her a big tight slap on her face and uh, accusing her that did you steal this and she was in deep shock and of course feeling betrayed humiliated you know all these i mean she's just a little kid you know when we're a little kid we, we have no much uh, rationalization she's not even angry she's just like oh did i do something wrong when my father you know is not believing in me and she said that no my friend gave it to me the father refused to believe in her so she cried she remember she cried and cried and cried and cried for so long she just don't know what to do how to deal with it and and ever since that incident she said she has not cried shed a tear for the next 20 years and uh, and that's why she came to this session she felt like she needed to be in touch with her emotions again because it's, it's really affecting her at the workplace Hi, welcome to Shan Living. My name is Sylvia and I'm a certified emotion code practitioner. So perhaps uh, not many of you have heard of the emotion code. Um, I will say that it's not that mainstream, uh, especially here in Singapore. Um, but I was really fortunate and uh, lucky to have discovered and stumbled on it several years ago. Um, and ever since my life has changed. Emotion Code is uh, founded by a chiropractor called Dr. Bradley Nelson over 20 years ago. Um, well, he has started his chiropractic since really young. And, um, and of course, his expertise is in detecting uh, imbalances um, based on the muscle reflexes of his uh, patients. And through this process, he's able to know um, how to uh, uh, treat his patients to recovery. You know, after treating and meeting with thousands and thousands of patients across his whole career, he started to like one day really dawn on him that even though everyone is coming to see him for a physical problem, you know, that's manifested into a physical form of uh, pain, actually everybody has an underlying issue that is the root cause of all their physical sickness and that hidden underlying root cause is nothing more than our emotions. And it was this uh, epiphany that he began to do his uh, research and um, of course, based on a lot of his you know, intuitive uh, connection with body, mind, spirit, that he finally um, developed a, such a powerful healing technique that is called the emotion code. So really it's, it's about decoding what is the emotional baggage that is you know, uh, hidden within, within us that went undetected. Um, so the thing about emotions, it's, it's invisible, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, we, we can feel it, but it's really a mystery. Um, so the beauty of this emotion code is that it is able to utilize a technique to help us really pinpoint on the specific emotional baggage or, or uh, emotional trauma or negative emotions, intense emotions that uh, we are harboring. Uh, in, within us for, for a long, long time uh, without us realizing. So um, I'll, I'll speak a bit more about this technique later. Hope you'll stay with me. Before Shan Living, um, I was pretty much a corporate person. I work in the ad tech. Um, I travel around the world. I, I worked in big MNCs. I'm in the sales organizations, leading teams. Um, so I've been in that career for over 20 years and uh, I always thought maybe that was my, my purpose. <laughs> um, I, I do enjoy and I'm deeply grateful for, for my job, my, my this ad tech or past life career because it has enabled me to travel around the world and really you know, establish this, this worldview in me. Um, but of course, you know, when the life calling arrives you know, and it is time, uh, something will have to happen to your life and uh, create a sort of an awakening to start questioning what is really your existential purpose. So I think, you know, just like everyone who has encountered midlife crisis in your mid-30s, uh, I did hit uh, the wall of my career because I feel I have, you know, I, I, I can no longer um, uh, get more joy out of it. And in fact, I was quite um, uh, stressed out. I was burned out and it it, it even become a, a kind of depression, you know, a dread going to work because of the politics that I have to deal with, you know, people problem, 
uh, business sales goals and uh, everything was really becoming not as uh, delightful as I started on the career. And and I guess, you know, it has also, well, we all know the um, Maslow Law of um, Needs and we will all come to the tip of the pyramid where we start questioning what is our bigger, you know, purpose and value on earth. Um, and, and, and to me, I, it took me <laughs> a mild depression to actually uh, kick-started my body, mind, spirit journey. Uh, I was really in a bit bad shape, um, which I don't, I, I didn't really tell anyone, right? So, and uh, in fact, uh, in those days, uh, more than ten years ago, I think in my world, um, I didn't, I don't think anyone has heard of depression, and I wasn't aware of of such a mental illness, or I've never heard of well-being. I don't even know what self-love, self-care. Okay, you might, you might be surprised, but to me, this is really a whole new world at the time. I mean, the world that I was familiar with is the corporate space, uh, is the advertising, is the technology. You can talk to me about data and, and you know, uh, data science and, and, and uh, performance-driven campaigns. But you tell me, you ask me about well-being, self-care, self-love, uh, emotions, mindfulness, subconsciousness. All these are so new to me. Um, so, but, I mean, if I look back now, I have to thank... Thankfully, I did hit this um, really pit bottom of my life uh, in terms of my mental state. I, I was really in a dark space uh, for a good period of time. And uh, to the extent that I, I really told myself I, I have to get help, um, I can't let this spiral. So it was that wake up call that I really pushed myself and I started my soul searching journey. You know, uh, besides trying to figure out what is really wrong with me, why am I so unhappy despite I'm living so-called a high life in a, so um, so I stumbled into a lot of metaphysics I was learning crystal energy I was learning about chakra I was learning about angels channeling and finally I I stumbled on Zen meditation and I think mindfulness you know knowing mindfulness and practicing uh, and that was probably the first turning point of, uh, of my soul searching journey because it was the first time in many decades of my life that I connected with my inner self so called, or connected with my monkey mind. I started to realize that despite me sitting quietly and the whole room was quiet, all the meditators were quiet and silent, my mind was just so noisy. I can't stop talking and, and suddenly I, I did realize that you know, now with the silence, it's become more obvious of this monkey mind, the non-stop negative self-dialogue the worries about the future, the regrets about the past, <laughs> the frustrations and impatience about why am I not doing anything, I should be busy. You know, all these um, buzzing noise that's really going on in the mind that has been going on all the while. It's just that I was so distracted with a fast-paced life um, that I've never really, you know, listened to them. And uh, and I, I really need to thank that I, I went into this, uh, I got to learn, you know, and, and work with all the, um, work with the master and uh, learn from the brothers and sisters, the community. Uh, and I started to read a lot about the mind. I was so fascinated about how our mind works. And um, so I, I would say that it was the first time in my life that I, I felt inner peace, you know, or at least I found a, a method, a technique to, to you know, activate or deactivate my active mind. Um, so, and, and then of course, I went into uh, uh, Reiki, uh, which is healing with um, our innate energy through energy exchange. We are able to help uh, someone who is um, in our Reiki practice to realign, uh, to stabilize their, their vibrational energy. Um, and, and then, of course, I delve deeper into the seven chakras, right? How each of these energy center points are uh, affecting us in, in different ways. Um, especially for me, and I think a lot of my clients who come for Reiki, a lot is on the solar plexus, which is really right at the core. Uh, this, has, this one has to do with a lot of uh, issues with self-esteem, self-doubt, uh, lack of self-confidence. And there's also a lot on the throat chakra whereby there's so much um, difficulty and obstacles in, in really articulating or communicating, right? And, and, and also the third most common is, is, is the crown or actually maybe also the, the third eye. So this, this part of the mind has got a lot with either overthinking, <laughs> over imagination, overactive, um, that it becomes blocked. 
So learning Reiki and practicing Reiki and becoming a Reiki 2 uh, practitioner really open up a whole new world again um, in this holistic healing space. So I have the mindfulness, I have the meditation and, and I, I do Reiki. And uh, eventually I decided to start up uh, Shan Living because I, I feel that this is such a wonderful um, gift, uh, such a wonderful knowledge and, and skill set that if I can share with more people because I know I'm surrounded with people who are so stressful um, and no peace of mind literally that uh, I really hope they can come to Shan Living and enjoy even just a moment of stillness and calmness and serenity, right? So, uh, so I started to conduct classes on mindfulness, on breath work uh, for meditation. I conduct uh, Reiki healing sessions, therapy sessions for my clients, and um, yeah. And you know, the, the the interesting thing about the journey in healing works is that um, it, it just keep unfolding, right? <laughs> because the more I discover and understand what my clients' issues are. Uh, it really stimulate me or triggered me or inspired me to find more tools and techniques to help them to go further. And, uh, and that's where Emotion Code came into my path. So I realized that even though mindfulness or meditation is really beneficial in opening up our consciousness, helping us to come to the present moment, um, even Reiki healing is able to sort of, you know, realign your, your energy imbalances. But you know, at the end of the day, we are there's this um, human nature in us that we always want to know the truth. We want to know the answer. We want to know what is really bothering us. Why are we having all these invisible battles that we feel we are fighting internally? You know, of course, a lot of times it's manifested into life problems, whether it's in a marriage, in a relationship, you know, uh, at work, uh, success, failures. Um, but at the end of the day, if you really look at the life problems that we are experiencing externally, what really makes us so painful and suffering is really the emotions that we can't seem to shake off. It's like no matter how we try not to be negative, we are more negative than <laughs> than, whole, than, than than usual. So when I stumbled on Emotion Code, I was really excited because it is such a it is such a specific and precise. Um, technique for inquiry because I can actually use this healing technique to help you two things. To help you actually find out exactly what is the emotion imbalance, emotional baggage that you're carrying. And I'm not just going to say, oh, it's stress, it's anxiety, it's depression. That's too generalized. In fact, stress, anxiety and depression, they are a combination of a lot of negative emotions. I mean, we're going to jump into... So uh, for the Emotion Code for all practitioners, uh, we have this chart that consists of 60 uh, negative emotions that we can help our clients to uh, troubleshoot or pinpoint through uh, muscle testing. So we can actually drill down and, and identify that this is... A emotional baggage of shame, of worthlessness, feeling unworthy, feeling anger, feeling helpless, right? So I'm able to, based on the inquiry or the situation that you are in, to help you pinpoint. Now, it is important that we are able to at least put a label on what you are feeling, you know, what is really the emotion that you are attached to that's really hindering you, that's really making your life, you know, miserable. Um, because if we don't have a label, we can't fix it, right? We cannot just say, I'm not happy and I'm depressed. It's so hard. It's too big. We need to break down the elephant. So as um, an effective part of this technique is to really zoom in to the specific emotion that you are experiencing intensely right now and that's causing so many ripple effects of negative experiences. And knowing that label is really just tip of the iceberg, you know, it's like, so what if I know I'm going through shame or it's guilt or it's, you know, despair? Uh, how can I use this information to, to heal? Well, that is the second thing that I'm able to do for you is that, again, using the muscle testing technique, we are able to actually uh, tap into your subconscious mind. Uh, apologies if this is the first time you hear about subconscious, subconsciousness, you know, this theory. Again, I have articles writing about it. Um, I'm also going to create some videos on it. But uh, basically, in a nutshell, our mind, right, we, we have 
the conscious and the subconscious part. The conscious part is whereby we are in control, we are aware, right? Um, and the subconscious part is like we, we are not in control in a way, it's like autopilot. It's been programmed year after year, day after day that, you know, it's like brushing teeth. You don't even have to think about it. You know, to pick up the toothbrush, put the toothpaste and start, right? So this is the, all the subconscious reactions that it's already programmed within us. And and the, the reason why it, everything can be automated is that it, it stores all the memories. It doesn't have to relearn again and again. It remembers every single thing in our life from the minute we are born. And for those of you who believe in, you know, past life, yeah, even that, past life memories. So, um, so the thing is, through the muscle testing, we are able to tap into this huge database in your subconscious mind um, to find out which year and which event actually, you know, is the first in triggering this intense emotion of shame, of worthlessness, uh, that, you know, you haven't really navigated out of it. You, you, at that time, maybe because you were unconscious, it was, it was so painful that a lot of us, what we habitually do is that we just sweep under the carpet, right? We just try to move on with life and not think about it. For example, you know, maybe as a child, I, I have a client who told me that, you know, you really broke my heart when she tells me her story that um, when she was really young child and uh, one day she came back home and the, the father uh, saw a brand new eraser in her pencil case and without a word he gave her a big tight slap on her face and uh, accusing her that did you steal this and she was in deep shock and of course feeling betrayed humiliated you know all these I mean, she's just a little kid, you know, when we're a little kid, we, we have no much uh, rationalization. She's not even angry. She's just like, oh, did I do something wrong when my father, you know, is not believing in me? And she said that, no, my friend gave it to me. And the father refused to believe in her. So she cried. She remember she cried and cried and cried and cried for so long. She just don't know what to do, how to deal with it. And, and ever since that incident. She said she has not cried or shed a tear for the next 20 years. And uh, and that's why she came to the session. She felt like she needed to be in touch with her emotions again because it's, it's really affecting her at the workplace. She feels that, is it because I don't have the emotional intelligence that I'm always offending my boss, uh, I'm always not saying the right things, you know, and everyone is trying to bully her. Um, and. Um, you know, just, just outcasting her. So, yeah, so this is one example of emotional baggage. Probably at that time, I mean, of course, through the emotion decoding, we realized that, yeah, there was shame. I mean, shame is the feeling that you thought you've done something wrong and irreputable. And then, of course, there were worthlessness, right? Because um, I must be useless and, 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 you know, unworthy that my, my father didn't really believe in me. Uh, and there was betrayal because parents is who we trust the most and yet you know without that uh, belief you know it was it was really intense so uh, so this is an example of how emotion code um, therapy works basically we use the technique of muscle testing to you know really find out a specific um, emotional baggage or negative emotion that you are experiencing right now that's really causing all the you know, chaos in, in life right now. And then with that specific emotion, we are able to then help you trace back to which year of your life and which event triggered that emotion. And of course, the third part is now that you know the emotion, the, you know the, the history, what do you want to do with it, right? So that is really the, the ultimate closure in, in the therapy whereby two things will happen. One is uh, we will actually, um, we do use right an, another technique um, to help you release that emotion in a form of energy out of your body system. Okay, so it's really synergizing with my learning in Reiki whereby right energy is, um, is really what we all uh, experiencing every single day impacts our life so much but the thing is it's invisible so how do you extract something so invisible out of your so-called body system so there is a technique involved here as well to help you really release and channel out and um, all these uh, emotional old emotional baggages that uh, and unhealthy emotional baggages that we have uncovered in the session
Um, so then, you know, the other part is, uh, so you instantly, when the emotion, when the energy is gone, you can feel that, that intensity, that denseness, you know, is suddenly lifted and you feel, wow, suddenly, you know, lighter and more opened. And, uh, and, the, and then, of course, you know, the second part has got a lot to do with reconciliation. I mean, energetically, yes, we are feeling much better now, but you do have to come back to this old history and uh, use your wisdom, right? Use your open heart to go and think about how do I put a closure to it? Do I continue to be angry with my father or should I forgive, right? How do I do it? Why is it trying to, to teach me actually this whole incident? Maybe there's something, you know, everything does happen for a reason. So, you know, throughout this whole process of identifying, uh, tracing back and then releasing and reconciliation, re reconciling, um, my role really is to facilitate you. Uh, I, I, I'm a true believer of every one of us is a healer. There's a healer within all of us. We can heal each other. Um, but you know, the, the problem is when we are in pain, <laughs> it's just so hard to help ourselves. We just need some external support that can help us hold the space, right? guide us, facilitate us. So I, I will facilitate my client based on holding the space for them, helping them to connect the dots, articulate what really is their situation. And, um, and during the reconciliation, you know, uh, offer you know, some of the insights that I have, uh, I'm able to, to draw from the session um, to offer it to them for their own clarity. Uh, so, you know, the thing is, actually throughout this whole, my personal soul searching journey is that I also discovered a side of me that I've never realized is I'm actually an empath. So someone who is an empath is that uh, we're really sensitive to energy, really sensitive to emotions. We can absorb people's emotions like a sponge without us knowing. Um, so if you don't know, you can't control. So, you know, from young till uh, adult, it, yeah, I, I'm always puzzled. Like nothing happened, but suddenly I can just, boom, you know, from a very cheerful state to a very, I just become angry or become sad. And now I understand that perhaps I, I, I've been absorbing some something that's happening around me or someone very close to me, their emotion, which is not mine. So again, you know, everyone, uh, every tool that's given to you, um, you can use it for destruction or construction. So when I finally found out about my empathic nature, you know, I, I, I'm so glad that I'm able to have that discovery and, and guidance from teachers and then I'm able to now make good use of this gift. It is a gift. I mean, of course, it's a very heavy gift because you are always feeling what people are feeling. So sensitive. <laughs> um, but I can actually use this uh, empathic channel to actually feel what you're feeling. And that's why I can empathize my clients better and, and you know, um, offer my, my sharing, my insights to them. Because throughout the session, I just receive signals, message, my goosebumps, <laughs> feelings, you know, wow, when we maybe, when we touch on grievance, I can suddenly feel my whole nose souring, my heart contracting. Uh, when we talk about shame, I can feel my whole core, you know, um, become intense. Uh, sometimes we talk about stress, I can feel my right shoulder, becoming tight yeah so i can feel a lot of my clients during the session um and and of course it has been a journey for me to understand how to uh manage and then make sure that i become you know these are more these are actually empowering talents that i'm able to assist you yeah and so that is the emotion code and that is how um emotional healing therapy session will work um, usually we'll begin with some conversation don't worry if you are really not quite sure what's happening I think 80-90% of the time my client when I ask them so what's going on do you want to tell me and they were like oh where do I begin I really don't know it's everything and everything <laughs> and I totally understand that because I have been there you know it's like one thing led to another oh, it's, a, it's a work problem but actually you know I have problems at home too and then with my mom and then with my boyfriend and, and, and then there's this you know, self-blame, well, you know, so everything just like entangled and become a huge snowball. But it's okay, you just come, speak whatever that comes to your mind, 
because I will be here and that's my job. My job is to help you connect the dots. I'm going to help you organize everything and I'm going to articulate back to you and I will, you know, check with you is this the situation, right? And with that, uh, of course, because each, each session is only 60 minutes, um, we, we jump straight into the inquiry. It can be something like, um, you know, trying to find out what is this emotional, um, uh, we call it trap emotions, actually, there's a term for it. Um, trap emotion that is causing, what is the trap emotion that is causing this uh, difficulty in the marriage, for example? You know, what is this trap emotion that is creating all these bullying situation in your workplace, right? Or maybe you just like totally don't even have a specific inquiry. We can just also start from that. What is the emotion, trap emotion that we can uncover today to help you feel a little bit lighter? Yeah, so don't worry. You don't have to come with any preparation at all. My sessions are always free flowing. I prefer to work with an open heart, a flowing mind rather than someone who has already, you know, sketch out or, or script out what they want to tell me. So um, let the conversation flow and I will guide you and I will discover, we will, you know, try to heal, try to release. Um, of course, uh, most of my sessions, the, the immediate outcome is that the physical sensation you, you feel a lot of um a lot more lighter right and that is also based on the, the feedback from my clients um, of course this the, the ex extent of the physical response is a bit different from individual some are very sensitive it's like straight away they view you know the energy vibration they can feel their whole muscle tightness on their shoulders you know just soften um, some clients are less sensitive and maybe especially for those for the first time you are in contact with holistic healing uh, you might not feel that response uh, so uh, obviously but it some, sometimes take a few days I have clients who just texted me two days later and say oh, you know what I have the best sleep last night for the first time in my life I sleep through like a baby you know or I, I feel that joy and openness um, suddenly this morning when I wake up you know I'm revitalized so, <clears throat> um, so that is that is the outcome and of course the other side is a lot on wow realization like oh, why didn't I think of that I thought I have move on with life i've forgotten that that argument with my my dad i've forgotten that the episode in the childhood i thought i've you know uh, uh healed from that heartbreak from that cheating i thought i've healed from that workplace uh toxic that colleague or that boss who has humiliated me and somehow during during the session you start realizing that no you, what you have done is you just suppressed it and try to ignore it and move on with life because it's just too painful to look at it. Okay, so um, it is important. We all need to be brave with our life and you know cut the cords <laughs> at a point of time. We can't keep running away because it will keep chasing after us. So, but no worries. You know, we need so much uh, strength to do this, and that is again where I play my role. You know, I'm there for you. And um, after the session, post session, what I often do because there's going to be so much discussion so much discoveries during the session so after the session i'm going to write to you a, a summary and recap and also you know two to three key action items like how can you continue to affirm yourself if you need to heal you heal if it's about making a choice then make a choice when you are at the best state of mind right we'll keep in touch i mean my channel is always open for my clients and um they will come back, you know, as and as and when they feel necessary. I have clients who start to come back every week until they feel everything is resolved. And uh, I have also clients who come on a monthly basis just to because they feel alright after the session and they just want to, you know, at least maintain for self care. So um, yeah, I, I think that that's about it for this uh, introductory video. Um, it's long overdue. I've always wanted to do a video to talk about the session, but I didn't get to it and I finally done it. <laughs> so um, I really hope to uh, connect with you. If you do need help, you need support for your emotional well-being. Uh, if you do, if you are open and, and intrigued by this idea and you believe that probably this is something that you need, you know, discoveries about your trapped emotions, um, do come and try out the session. Uh, I do have a... Uh, 30 minute discovery call uh, if you want to have any questions for me even if you just want to whatsapp me um, it's fine you know feel free to ask questions okay because I, I know that usually when we are not in a very good place you know it's so hard to make a decision <laughs> um, so no worries at all take your time follow your heart uh, all will be well and I see you soon